I ha have had the pleasure to teach international criminal law uh, at the faculty level for the last 10 years. And what it's caused me to realize in many respects is that our reflection on international criminal law, in fact, our reflection on the relationship between domestic criminal law and international criminal law has been exceedingly limited. When we talk about international law, historically, we have talked about areas in which states act. You all know this, of course, international public law traditionally has been state actors, as is the International Court of Justice been the resolution of concerns by state actors. Any criminal law matters were generally dealt with through what's called mutual legal assistance. Those are those circumstances, obviously, where if there's someone who's indicted uh, and charged with a crime in Lebanon but happens to be living in another country, you seek the assistance of the other country to bring that person to your country to try and equate uh, and involve in the judicial process. We don't think of criminal law as being this tribunal having an impact on the law of Lebanon. And we don't think of criminal law as Lebanon being applied by people like myself who do not speak Arabic and are not from a civil law country. That's not, that's not the way we traditionally think of criminal law. Criminal law has really been a matter dealt with in the sovereignty of individual states. International criminal law has come a considerable way since Nuremberg. Um, and there are a few things that relate to the work of the Office of the Prosecutor that are a reflection on the developments of international criminal law. Um, and those are a few of the issues I thought might be interesting to you, uh, besides the issues of the present work of the office, which I'm happy to address if it's of interest to you. What is it that hopefully you can take away from some of the discussions here? You, you can take away the practicality. How do we actually operate? That certainly makes it a little easier for the students in their questioning of you to understand the work, both academically and practically. The second is the application of substantive Lebanese criminal law. We are, as you know, applying substantive criminal law from Lebanon and dealing with the law of terrorism as it applies both primarily under the Lebanese code. Secondly, we are an investigative body. The investigations reside in my office and I direct the investigations of this tribunal. Though we apply substantive criminal law, obviously which is of a reflection of the law in Lebanon, we apply certain procedural aspects which are completely different. And it, di it differs from the ICTY in some respects, it may differ from other institutions, uh, but what's interesting is that it reflects a merger and a mix of different legal systems. The role of investigation by the prosecution is obviously not something unfamiliar to me, something I've done for 25, 28 years, whether you want to include when I was a junior lawyer and probably really didn't and carry out and conduct the investigations and then simply watch someone more senior than I do it. For a civil law system, the prosecutor carrying out the full investigation, not just the initial one which places it before the investigating magistrate, but the full investigation is something foreign to many civil law systems. Uh, and this is an aspect which reflects another system, the common law. In the investigation, uh, I act completely independently of uh, the judiciary, of states, interests of various states in our work, um, and remain independent uh, throughout that work. In terms of other aspects, just ba briefly about the work of uh, the office, we apply uh, the criminal procedure of the tribunal. And this is an area that I think, you know, when we started doing this work 15, 20 years ago, when we started looking at what would constitute international criminal law, what were we looking at? We, we started with Nuremberg. I mean, I presume that in some of the discussions with the students and in some of the teachings, we talk about Nuremberg and the Tokyo Tribunal. Well. Those, of course, have been criticized as the role of the victor over the vanquished. There's no criminal procedure. If you check, the rules of procedure is about 15 paragraphs long for the Nuremberg Tribunal. Look at our rules of procedure and evidence. As Judge Shamsuddin has pointed out, we're a little bit bigger, a little bit broader. Um, and it includes both civil law and common law. Arabic. And the Arabic <laughs> one, yes, of course, which I'll read to you. Uh, it would take too long. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that we have an opportunity and the course has an opportunity and you as professionals and academics have an opportunity to look at an area which is unexplored, which is the procedural aspects. 
And this tribunal, I think, and the complementarity of the different systems, the civil and the common law, this tribunal is groundbreaking. The ICTY, I worked there for 13 years, so I now stepped away. I can look at it a little more objectively as opposed to being defensive of it. It's primarily common law. I mean, it's a system that seems to be predominantly common law. It slowly shifted. Go, go and look at the jurisprudence. At the very beginning, we didn't accept dossiers. There was no acceptance of written evidence. It was primarily an old school common law. And as a common law lawyer, I fit right in, no problem, willing to do a cross-examination, bring on the witness, I'll do the investigation. But, but that's not the way international criminal law is developing. And what's fascinating is that we now see, and specifically in Lebanon, from a purely academic point of view, the input and impact of international law on Lebanese law, maybe, but more importantly, the impact of Lebanese law on international law, which brings us closer to a civil law system and brings me closer to a system that I have to learn more about if I'm going to be able to success, successfully do the work that's required of this institution. But what I find and what I found so far is that at the end of the day, the first principles, the, the essential elements of the systems are not that different. And what we should be looking for is the complementarity and what I would encourage you as professionals in the field of international law, international public law, and as academics to explore this and to be open-minded with your students to the impact of international law on Lebanese law, just like I have learned to be open-minded to the impact of civil law on my jurisdiction. And this is a step that if we take it, and whatever happens to the tribunal, this is an opportunity for you, it's an opportunity for your students. And whether we like it or not, it's probably here to stay. The International Criminal Court is not going anywhere, and it will over time merge civil law and common law concepts and merge some of the concepts that we hope will be developed here. Maybe, just maybe, we will actually be able to contribute to the development of international criminal law at the ICC because we are facing things they haven't faced yet and may not face in terms of the impact of civil law, which is the benefit of having colleagues from Lebanon and is the benefit of having you here as well because it's very helpful for us for you to encourage students to learn this, to apply, to be our interns, to be our lawyers, and to probably at the end of the day teach me a little bit more than I know at the moment to be able to do my job. Thank you.